conversation that we're about to have on matters vegetable farming, uh, specifically touching on capsicum. I, I know there are the colored capsicum, the red ones and the yellow ones, very, very sweet. Uh, we also have broccoli. This is something that we're encouraging people to eat these days to add to their diet. Uh, which is an amazing additive. But right now, to help us put all this into perspective, I'm joined by a young man. Uh, uh, you know, you're very young, and uh, it's it's a beautiful thing to see. You know, we're told that uh, the average age of a farmer is 63 years in this country, but we're changing that narrative. Yes. Having young people coming into this uh, valley chain uh, is Hilary Obura from Nick Smart Farm. This farm is located uh, at Wironi. And thank mm -hmm. you very much for making time to speak to us. Thank you so much. Wow. So, so starting it off, Hilary, yes. uh, at Nick Smart Farm, uh, you guys, uh, you tell me the farm has been around for two, three, four years, they're uh, about. Uh, about three years right now. Three years right yeah. now. Okay. Uh, wh what did you guys start with? What product uh, were you guys growing? The product before coming there, mm -hmm. the background history, Mm -hmm. About the farm, we were doing cabbage production. Okay. Yeah, the cabbage, the normal cabbage, the white one. Mm -hmm. So after they had some two greenhouses, which they were doing capsicum farming, the colored ones. So with my knowledge coming, I came as to impact. Okay. Yeah, because the one, the guy who was there, the old guy who was there, he was just one, the custodian. So no experience, but from the moment I came, we had to develop certain experience, follow certain practices, the cultural way. Okay. So, so you studied agriculture in Kampi? Yeah, I did uh, BSc Horticulture okay. at Jacot. Oh, yeah. all right. So you came in as a specialist, you want to impart change? Yeah, a specialist and an agronomist too. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that is convergence at play, you know? Yeah. Every you aspect know, as of an it. agriculture, you have mm -hmm. to go to diversify. Okay. Uh, there are different areas you have to diversify. So like the agronomist part, advisory to farmers, advisory to any client who want to venture into certain farming. First mm -hmm. you do a research, then you advise them so well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's start with capsicum because um, capsicum is quite popular. Yeah, right, right, uh, it's quite popular. It is, it is loved. I don't know, th this trend, is, is it an, a, a recent trend where it is speaking so much or it's something that has been there within the local market? I guess after Corona, mm -hmm. it's when the production picked up. Okay. You know, during Corona, people, they started venturing into farming the, the lockdown. Mm -hmm. You know, people couldn't travel from one place to another. Yes. So at your own convergence at home, mm -hmm. you start by small kitchen gardens, you know, you're impressing a small bits of agriculture. Mm -hmm. So from kitchen garden, you have some one acre of farm, you start your production bit by bit. So for the capsicum farming, you see, one has to determine a good market first. Okay. You see, mm -hmm. before venturing. You know, that is if you're, if you're doing for commercially. commercially. Yeah. Okay. Commercially, you mm -hmm. have to have the market first. Okay. Because you cannot do any farming without any outlet. You don't know where you take your produce, when they are ready, who will sell to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes most of the farmers tend to do something because they feel they can do farming, mm -hmm. but they don't see the, the directives. Mm -hmm. Let's say the, out, the outlet of this product, okay. where will they sell? So market is very important. Market is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess from 2021, the, when the lockdown was reinstated now, you find people started doing different, different types of crops. So for us, the farm that I'm working with, we ventured into capsicum farming. Okay. You saw the market was so good, you mm -hmm. know, because even you cannot just plant just any day. You have to have a proper timing. Okay. So as to reach the demand on the market. All right. You see. And, and that brings, because now we want to approach this in a twofold way. Mm -hmm. First of all, how to properly do capsicum farming. You say during COVID, mm -hmm. uh, we're working from home, yes, some of the people spending so much time and you start asking yourself, this, this space, I can yeah. do something sure, with this sure. space. Well, let me plant capsicums here. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a right way of doing capsicum uh, farming and is there a wrong way? 
Fabe, I'll go with uh, both sides. There is a right way, mm -hmm. and there is also a wrong way. The right way, it's when you have, you see the demand, you picture, you foresee mm -hmm. if at what period or at what seasons are capsicum farming. Then do a lot of research mm -hmm. concerning capsicum farming. Let's say no is doing capsicum farming. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe green ones. Then what can I do as Hillary? Okay. Let me venture into the colored ones. Okay. You see, mm -hmm. first when you try, you are not having a competition, but you are trying to look for something that is more value added. Okay. Yeah. Let's say like the colored capsicum, it's more value added. If you look at the prices for maybe colored capsicum, a kg can go for roughly 150 to 300, depending mm -hmm. on the demand. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. So the venture for capsicum, especially for someone who can start or for someone who is willing to do capsicum first, they have to do certain things. Okay. So market research you've mentioned, yeah. which is very important, but common mistake. Because at your farm, you interact with farmers. Yeah, true. People see you do farming, capsicum farming, and they approach you and they're like, I'm interested in this. Uh, what is the common mistake, especially from the practical bit, where you are supposed to prepare your farm, uh, get a seedling, all this, this nitty gritty processes. What is the common mistake that a lot of farmers make and how can they avoid it? A lot of mistakes that farmers make, especially it's when they, they choose the type of the seed. You know, colored calves come have different varieties. Mm -hmm. We have like red, the Indras, we have the Elanga, the yellow ones, Comanand, Admiral, mm -hmm. you see Red Knight. There are so many different varieties of capsicum. So for someone to do, you have to have that a resistant one which is so resistant to the certain of the pest or any incident that can occur. Let's say your soil, because first, before even you do, you have to do a soil test of your, farm, of your soil. Mm -hmm. From direct, from plowing, land preparation. Mm -hmm. from a start. Mm -hmm. You know, as you prepare your land, you are looking at where you can source your seed. So especially us, we also, we always propagate our own seeds. Okay. Yeah, so the good variety that majorly it's on the market, the good size, we used to do passerella, the red ones, and the langa, the yellow ones. So something that farmers mistakenly do, it's when they identify the, the seed. Mm -hmm. They just go for any seed. Not all seeds will germinate. Okay. Not all seeds will have the, the same production. Mm -hmm. And also the, same, the certain mistake they always do, it's, uh, you find in terms of management, that is where you can have your good capsicum during management. Mm -hmm. So from propagation, you have to ensure that you propagate your, your seed okay. first. All right. Then after roughly four to six weeks, they, it's when the seeds are ready, the seedlings now. Mm -hmm. You have to propagate them at the size of 10 to 15 centimeters height. And then during that transplanting, that different, um, let's say for us, we used to go to manure, which is more decomposing quicker compared to cutlu and others. Okay. Yeah. So with goat manure, we put a handful of one, then one teaspoon of DAP. The reason why we we using DAP as a fertilizer is to have the uniformity of all the crops. Okay. Yeah. So from there, the watering, you see, th these are young, they are young seeds, seedlings. Mm. So you have to do a regular watering. Okay. Let's say if you are watering them at this time, you have to look it for, let's say for if it's in weekly. Okay. You have to do two to three times. All right. Per week. Okay. Because as the crop grows, you gradually change okay. the watering. Okay. So from watering, there are other agricultural practices let's say when the, after the first month of uh, production of uh, growing you have to apply cn the reason why is to add those nitrogens to oh. the to the soil and to make more foliage for the leaves okay then afterwards you know the first month is when you can see some of the first fruits for me it's advisable to remove those first fruits okay the reason why you remove those first fruits at the v center it's because those first fruit, they tend to grab or take a lot of soil, the nutrients, the waters that cannot be distributed to other okay. parts of the crop. Okay, yep. definitely. So um, 
quite interesting. <coughs> um, you say crop management is very critical. I mm -hmm. want us to take a short break, mm -hmm. but when we come back, I don't know whether we can copy and paste um, crop management uh, elements and practices to be able to, you know, widely apply when it comes to vegetable farming, not only in capsicum, but other products like broccoli. This is our conversation right here. We have Hilary Obura, who's from Nick Smart Farm from Rironi, and uh, he's a young man, and he says that um, you have to educate yourself before you get into any kind of farming, educate yourself and look at the market, the demand before you invest uh, somewhere. At this particular moment, the Farm Kenya Show takes a short break. When we come